yeah, it's definitely uh, a confusing and I think disease, but the most frustrating is how unpredictable it is. I mean, I did not know what it was. I realized uh, when I was diagnosed, I realized that I knew other people who had it growing up, but I didn't realize that's what it was because I assumed they were sick because that's just what we default to. The alopecia I have is alopecia universalis. Um, it can all, I believe it all falls under alopecia areata. Um, that's the typical, that's just hair loss in general. I mean, male pattern baldness, that's a form of alopecia. Um, women, or people losing their hair through chemotherapy, that is considered alopecia because it's just the act of losing hair. Um, alopecia areata is just losing it in patches, whether it's body hair or hair, head hair. Um, but uh, ultimately, let's see, from there it goes to alopecia totalis, which is just losing all the hair on your head, and then universalis, um, which I didn't think I was going to get, but that's all uh, the hair in your body. And of course, like, you know, most people who have it have like a few patches here and there, so I have a little on my head, I got a few eyelashes, I think I have some toe hairs, um, <laughs> but, and like two armpit hairs, which is, I'm okay with that, but... Uh, <laughs> But yeah, it's, um, it's frustrating because there's no cause, no cure, like, there's really nothing to do. Went to the dermatologist, got diagnosed, got the steroid shots. I got a few rounds of those, but they were absolutely painful and awful. Um, and then at the same time, you know, everyone was telling me that it was not going to all fall out. They were like, oh, it's just like, you'll get a few spots, like, I've gotten a few spots and stuff. Um, and I'd see these pictures of girls online who lost all their hair on their body, and I used to think, like, man, that would suck. <laughs> like, that's not gonna happen to me. That was, it was a shock to cope with, especially being so attached to hair throughout my entire life. Like, that was, like, one of my biggest identifying factors. It was the biggest part of my identity that I associated with. Um, I loved my hair a little too much. Yeah, it's definitely uh, a confusing and I think disease, but the most frustrating is how unpredictable it is. Um, especially because I wasn't sure how much hair I was going to lose and then it's been six months and now I have no hair on my body, so it's wild. <laughs> A lot of people who I've talked to or seen um, online and in the media, they have gone through phases where they've lost all the hair in their body and then eight years later they grew it all back, it fell out again, they just get, like another year goes by, they gain their eyebrows back, then it falls out again, so it's this big cycle, um, which is also a little, I mean it's very frustrating but a little heartbreaking because you know you think you're getting better and then it all just leaves again, so. The most support I've had, especially with our work, is like the alopecia community itself. Um, I've been able to, like over, uh, different social medias like Instagram and Facebook. I've been able to meet other women who also talk about it. I met a woman who makes uh, all sorts of like jewelry and stuff of bald women and she'll do pieces representing how hair felt. So she had an earring that had a piece of metal coming down like a like when you tuck hair behind your ear. Um, and so like seeing that was definitely inspirational. Yeah, even just, you know, meeting uh, this woman, Rachel, who makes these wigs, and that's a whole art form in itself. So really seeing others like take it and apply it in a creative way to their life definitely helped me. It's definitely pushed me back into focusing on internal like trauma and issues rather than 
I was starting to breach more into just like aesthetic uh, artwork because I thought because my focus was I hope it sells and so that's generally what sells but it's a lot more rewarding and now I'm getting back into making art that I enjoy making and then also get to feel something after looking at it. I'm starting but I want to continue painting like strong women bald because I think that's pretty cool. Um, that's not something I've ever seen before besides like sick women. Um, so I think like changing that narrative as well so that showing that you know like hair loss isn't like dying or anything. Um, but yeah so I started uh, bald painting. I did it based off of um, there's a piece called Artemis Rising. Yeah, it's a piece, I'm tr I haven't written down the artist, but um, it's a piece that I've always really liked. And so I took a frame of it, of Artemis, because she looks so powerful. She's got her nice arms, her sword. Um, yeah, she could definitely like fuck some people up. Yeah, so I've like repainted it and I mean, you know, not realistically in my own style, but uh, with her as bald. I'm, I've been thinking about doing that with like, various different strong female women um you know painting like people who are bald and not like frail and sick looking but more so like strong and so like just seeing like more representation in general because really when i say i have alopecia most people don't know what that is i wasted way too much of my time missing out on fun things because i was so uncomfortable with myself don't be regardless of what is going on in your life be comfortable in yourself love yourself um, and hug a bald person if you see him. <laughs> <laughs>